Bao. He has his PhD in aggregation philosophy at this university and belongs to our research institute, uh, where he is the principal researcher of a project called Skepticism and Conservatism. He has several books and articles published in Portuguese, in French, and in English. His most recent books in Portuguese are Points of Doubt, Skepticism, Early Modern Age and Politics, and the other one is Montaigne and Modernity. His latest articles include Skepticism and Style, Iris Murdoch, and the Rethinking of Shakespeare as a Philosopher. Thank you, Boy, for being here. Thank you. Uh, in the first place, I uh, express uh, my gratitude to Professor Paul Philippe Monteiro for his kind invitation and also uh, my admiration for his uh, great work for this initiative. And I have to say that I feel honored in uh, participating in this colloquium and in speaking in this uh, session shared by him. When I first announced the title of my presentation, I had no knowledge of Martin Pushner's uh, book, The Drama of Ideas, uh, Platonic Provocations in Theatre and Philosophy, of which uh, a part of a chapter, the fifth, is uh, devoted to uh, Iris Murdoch. It is needless to add, that any discussion of a theme such as uh, the one I've chosen has to take, uh, as now, to take into account the stimulating contribution of the groundbreaking book by uh, Pupner. Uh, George Steiner, in uh, the foreword in 1997, he wrote for the rather comprehensive compilation of Iris Murdoch's philosophical writings entitled Existentialists and Mystics, uh, published during the last phase of her lifetime, declared with characteristic, with this characteristic insight that Murdoch possesses, he says, in the rarest measure, a gift of which Valéry's Monsieur Tet and Musil's epic are the supreme instances, that of dramatizing, of making figurative the act of thought. End of thought. This remark of Steiner's seems, above all, primarily directed to her novels, some of which he indeed alludes to immediately after. It apparently has, however, a more general scope, for it consistently pinpoints a specificity of the Madokian style. We can see it present not only in most of her novels, obviously including those centered on philosophy and having philosophers as main characters, uh, as well as those just easily recognizable as somehow philosophical, along with others of a seemingly lighter turn. But also, at least in part, in many of the non-fiction published texts, majority, the majority of which has to do with philosophy. Is that quality of earth a shadow of a possible interplay in a work of uh, theatre and philosophy, or just a simple uh, trait of her style? Is it related to a famous and idiosyncratic Platonism? Uh, we can suppose that she came to perfect it throughout her career as a novelist, along with a command of literary technical skills, because it tends to shine more characteristically in her middle and later creative phases. Uh, and yet, in, under the net, it, uh, it, it, uh, it is apparent uh, already. But, and indeed, in uh, earlier philosophical texts, which have a predominant academic scope, that quality seems eminently subdued. Anyhow, the exploration of these issues and the appreciation of the use Murdoch made of this gift of hers in her writings require the consideration of the notion of the separation between philosophy and art she always uh, insisted on, and uh, especially in, in the, from the uh, 70s 
uh, and on and afterwards. In spite of the independence and the original term of her thought, as well as of uh, in-depth uh, knowledge of uh, British and continental traditions, uh, Murdoch's conception of philosophy mainly issues from the uh, British tradition she was trained into, first at Oxford and afterwards at Cambridge, <laughs> a list of philosophy writing. Undeniably, a Roman thinking became from the 50s onwards more and more critical of many aspects of their tradition, as well as also uh, critical of many elements of the continental tradition. But now we can recognize its presence in the majority of their philosophical writings, albeit in different grades, from the early ones to a magnum opus in the field of philosophy, which is undoubtedly the book based on the early 80s Gifford lectures, Metaphysics as a Guide to Morals. It is a Suigen, this is a Suigenris and original book, as most commentators seem to agree, not only rich in content, but also composed in a style of its own. Uh, in fact, I believe it is difficult to speak of this style as completely homogeneous and uniform. It is just the other way round. It is extremely varied, protean and multiform, and uh, uh, dramatic in some ways. Perhaps that is in part due to the circumstance that it was composed during a rather long lapse of time, and as we've recalled, based upon texts written for lectures. Uh, uh, there remains something didactic about a few passages of the book, but that must not be the only reason. Sometimes the writing flows like in a notebook. At the times it reaches an aphoristic character, reminiscent of the writing of philosophers that influenced uh, Iris Murdoch like Wittgenstein and Schopenhauer. Uh, in still other moments, the tone is plainly reflective and essayistic. And uh, in sometimes it is dramatic. Uh, we also must remark that more than elsewhere in a theoretical work, we may find here many long quotations of texts she comments upon. The fact that the text of this book is not only a variety in style, but also many laid, uh, becomes visible in numerous occasions. I must here express that Iris Murdoch took care uh, of avoiding the defects in which the majority of the 20th uh, century philosophers and academics writing about philosophical themes incurred. Thus, while she generally wrote a philosophical text in an extremely clear, elegant and explicit prose, in a way not much unlike uh, those authors uh, she admired, she most definitely shunned the dry technicality of tone that characterized the great part of her contemporaries and rejected the adoption of uh, jargon. Thus, when we consider Murdoch's approach of the interrelation of philosophy and art and the manifest demarcation between the two fields uh, she always insisted upon, we cannot uh, forget that she in spite of her uh, originality and independence of thought, apparently <coughs> never renounced the conception of philosophy, writing, in great part determined by her background training. The very circumstance of the double condition as an artist and as a philosopher could not but make her self-conscious of the means by which how to deal with this duality and particularly sensitive to the issues concerning interrelations and distinct distinctions between the two. If in a major work, the theoretical writings of the 80s, uh, culminating in uh, the last non-fiction masterpiece, we can notice that the clear-cut separation made by Iris Murdoch between the two kinds of writing uh, and uh, uh, writing. The philosophic one and the artistic one is coherently and willingly pursued. A uh, good illustration, among many others, of the rigor of which 
with which Murdoch keeps apart the two areas may be found in a criticism she makes of Derrida in a passage of Metaphysics as a Morals, in which she considers that, um, and I quote, he is not strictly a philosopher, end of quotation, and tries to explain Derrida's influence in contemporary thought by the second sense he imparted, and I quote, his doctrine to literary writers and critics. Iris Maddock, uh, sworn, uh, familiar with all uh, philosophical traditions and schools, including the Far Eastern, some Far Eastern currents of thought, uh, swam against the current of the mainstream philosophies in her time, as uh, Martin Puckner ac acutely highlights when he presents her as one of those, and I quote him, contemporary philosophers who, against all odds, held on to some principles of Platonism. And depicts, and uh, I quote him again, Murdoch's Platonism as first and foremost an oppositional posture, a critique of the philosophical currents of her time. End of quotation. She always uh, took an original, uh, indeed, she always took an original philosophical position and had to sustain her positions against other philosophies that she felt free to criticize, uh, grounded always upon uh, solid argumentation. Thus, she was led to what one may call an oppositional posture, though we have to underscore that her Platonism was far from being. Uh, uh, from not being critical of Platonism itself. And anyway, I do not believe uh, I, I have difficulties in um, and, uh, 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 completely agreeing with Putin uh, that uh, a Platonism collided with a uh, demarcation between philosophy and the art. And I cannot really endorse uh, Puckner's claim that Murdoch's work testifies to a thorough entanglement, if not complete, merging of <coughs> literature and philosophy. Uh, because she distinguished, uh, she distinguished herself in both fields without confounding them at all. Like few other authors in the 20th century, such as uh, George Santayana, Jean-Paul Sartre, she, she wrote about, and George Steiner, for instance. A good illustration of this distinction made by Murdoch and of its self-conscious results is shown by uh, two platonic dialogues, uh, After the Heroes and Above the Gods, published as Acastus, two platonic dialogues. The first of which uh, was uh, uh, performed and uh, is penetratingly analyzed by Kuchner. I, I read them as two dexterously constructed um, dialogues full of uh, subtle references where the author, while paying homage to Plato, conveys artistically uh, views on art, religion, language and politics expounded in uh, philosophical writings of the 70s namely the sovereignty of good and the fire and the sun. While referred to philosophy and inserted in the philosophical tradition launched by Plato, the dialogue form, which precisely in the fire and the sun she considered a slight precaution against the monolithic system, thus akin, in her opinion, to anti-theoretical tendency of contemporary philosophers who attack, according to her words, system, jargon, grandeur, and the development of worldly theories, which prevent a, simply a, lively, a simple, lively relationship with truth." End of quotation. The Acastus plays are works of art. The second sense that their author was a philosopher. Of course, I agree with you with, that they are in the middle term. Uh, uh, they, they are both works of art and they are philosophy, works of philosophy. But the circumstance that the author was a philosopher trying to divulge 
to a wider audience a summary of the ideas and arguments she previously published in philosophical essays does not necessarily mean that they purport to, ident to completely identify the separate fields. The famous TV interview Iris Murdoch gave to Brian McGee, a version of which a year later appeared in printed form as literature, under the title Literature and Philosophy, belongs to the same period in which she published uh, The Fire and Sun and wrote The Acastle's Dialogues. And just like these two plays, performs the function of presenting her thought in a form uh, easily accessible to a wider audience than those of uh, uh, philosophers. There she not only emphasized the absence of a general role of philosophy in literature and declared her reluctance to admit that deep structure of any good literary work could be a philosophical one, as she stressed the limits of philosophy, claiming that the artist the artist for using his unconscious mind and uh, apparently uh, uh, she wrote one of her uh, 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 plays was wrote uh, uh, she admitted she wrote she, uh, it was uh, her unconscious mind that wrote the play uh, had the power of reaching far deeper than philosophy uh, she says, there is always something moral which goes down further than the ideas. The structures of good literary works are to do with erotic mysteries and deep, dark struggles between good and evil. End of quotation. Notwithstanding this, she also conceded that, uh, that philosophy and art, of which literature as well as drama is a representative, share the common ground of seeking for truth revealing it and trying to explain it, though the process by which they try, it to, they try to achieve their aims differ substantially. In The Fire and Sun, Murdoch simultaneously highlighted Plato's conception of philosophy as a spiritual discipline related to verbal debates and Plato's complex attitude towards art comprising even his attack on theater she sees as a characteristic of his Puritanism, for, uh, she says, like all Puritans, Plato hates the theatre. A, a trait she found he shared with Kant, though she classified them as different sorts of Puritans. A moral aristocratic Puritan Plato and Kant would be a moral democratic uh, uh, Puritan. En passant, I wish to call your attention to a quite subtle observation she made about the two philosophers resembling in combining, a, she says, in combining a great sense of human possibility with a great sense of human worthlessness. For Murdoch, Plato's Puritanism, providing him with an ascetic impulse, causes him to have conflictive and mixed feelings about the great artist inside himself. As always, she took care to conciliate a reading of Plato and of other main philosophers, all ages confounded, anchored on a profound historical philosophical knowledge of the subject, with a reflection on contemporary philosophy, thus integrating what she said about Plato and, in, and what she said in the wake of uh, his doctrines in her own global view of the issues crucial to uh, uh, philosophical, philosophic concerns and to the uh, present-day concerns. She had a wonderful power of synthesis, which in association with a gift of dramatizing the art of thought Steiner spoke of, produced insightful remarks and ins ins incisive formulae. In Metaphysics as a Guide to Morals, Iris Murdoch restated that interpretation of Platonism and of the relation between art and truth, giving a particular attention to paradoxical notions and to problematic issues within the general framework of the conceptual center of the work, the discussion of the dichotomy between fact and value taken at several levels. There, Iris Murdoch grounded on a metaphysical stance, diagnosed the problems of this cleavage from the different perspectives of epistemology, aesthetics, religion, uh, ethics, and politics, and try to overcome what she saw as critical in that distinction as conceived 
by main figures of the history of philosophy. Uh, Murdoch's criticism throughout this book of several modes of making that distinction and the argu uh, argumentation against the proposals of the philosophers who defended them cannot be dissociated of their insistence on asceticism, an insistence which itself should not be isolated from a platonic stance and from a reflection on the themes most recurrent in her latest theoretical writings. When she criticizes the main uh, stream philosophers uh, whose positions she studies, uh, she does it in order to overcome the distinction, thus reaching a standpoint from which she can posit an understanding of the relation between different modes of understanding and of existence. Uh, in a posture attainable through a sort of ascetic uh, process that has something to do with Plato, uh, in which a knowledge of, uh, of Western philosophical tradition converges with her experience as an artist, as a philosopher and teacher of philosophy, uh, we may read the imprint of a dramatic conception of philosophy which does not refrain from focusing the overlapping of religion, art, and philosophy. Interestingly enough, in this work, she develops and explores quite extensively an approach between the Puritan philosopher who hated theater, in spite of being an artist, inventing a dramatic form of philosophical writing, and the most emblematic theatrical figure of modern age, the very incarnation of theater for us, Shakespeare. The comparison she draws between them remains enlightening about the relation between philosophy and drama. I have to draw you, uh, to conclude, uh, uh, your attention here to the circumstance that uh, in the period a uh, biographer, Peter Conradi, uh, describes as one when she intensely studied uh, Shakespeare, was a period when uh, she was led to, uh, she was tempted and then she was there to abandon for a year, uh, almost, uh, uh, writing, uh, to abandon writing novels, uh, trying to turn into a full-time uh, playwright. Uh, she wrote uh, a couple of plays, but uh, she returned to, to novel writing afterwards. Uh, in that period, Madoc intensely studied Shakespeare, and uh, uh, this one, yes, experience was not <coughs> entirely successful, but ma made her uh, eventually reformulate many aspects in her uh, novel writing when she retook it and just preceded the composition of the lectures and essays where she presented during the 1970s a new or renewed Platonism. Thus, the insurmountable barrier that, according to her, separates art from philosophy, may somehow paradoxically coincide with the sharp awareness of their crisscrossing, the interplay between theatre and philosophy shedding light into both.